Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Dear all participants, thank you for giving opportunity for me and thank you to join this session Let me to introduce myself, I'm Priscilla Motira Jehan from Oral Maxillofacial Resident, Faculty of Dentistry, Hasanuddin University Today I will present a case report entitled Surgical Treatment of Odontogenic Infection at Submandibular Space in the Last Trimester Pregnancy I hope this session can be useful to all of us. Pregnancy has an important effect on oral health related to hormonal changes, eating patterns, and behavior. Pregnant women become very vulnerable to diseases of the teeth, gums, and periodontal because the immune system is suppressed in pregnancy. Pregnant women are more susceptible in uh, two infection including odontogenic infection odontogenic infection in pregnant women can act as a reservoir of bacteria or bacteria product that can spread to the fatal placenta um, infection agents their product can generate local inflammatory signaling pathways to the extra oral including the fatal placenta Early, early diagnosis is crucial for effective therapy in such severe infection. Therapy in this case is even more crucial during pregnancy because of the of the possible life threatening situation for both the pregnant patient and the fetus. The submandibular space is a potential space in the neck that, that consists of sublingual and submental space separated by neurohyoid muscles. They perforate the cortical and spread to the surrounding oral structure and present in the form of swelling and pus discharge. Infection can spread along the, seat, uh, the tissue space and lead to facial cellulitis involving the pure facial space. These spaces are bounded by muscles, bones, and actual facial layer. The case reports. A 31 years old pregnant woman with a gestation of 32 to 34 weeks arrived at hospital in Makassar with swelling in the lower jaw about 8 days prior to admission in uh, emergency room. The patient complained of pain in the right lower posterior teeth. Swelling appears accompanied by a history of fever. The day after that, when the swelling approached the chin, the patient began to have difficult opening her mouth, difficulty of swallowing, lack of eat and drink intact. The next day, the patient was taken to the hospital due to the swelling was bigger than before. Trismus positive, hardness negative, hot potato voice negative, and neck stiffness positive. Blood pressure uh, of the patient is 127 per 19, pulse 98, and respiratory uh, 24 temperature 39 celsius uh, laboratory finding white blood cell is 5900 is mean leukocytosis and hemoglobin 10.8 lower than the normal value on extra oral examination found an asymmetrical face swelling with diffuse boundary in the submandibular dextra region extend to the submental region sensitivity in the area of inflammation soft palpation redness and warmer temperature and fluctuation is positive intraoral examination limits to access because the opening mouth is limited and opg x-ray isn't available in the hospital patient received 3 liters oxygen 20 drips per minute of angel lactate and paracetamol 1 gram and uh, proposed to obtain to give metronidazole 500 milligram and then patient river to obtain and uh, examination found a fatal heart rate of 193 so uh, they delay the metronidazole until the fatal heart rate improve after for our observation the fatal heart rate, the normal range in 150 to 160 with normal his. So metronidazole and dexamethasone, dexamethasone was approved and 
duvet dilan in order to relax the uterus. Under this condition, uh, they approve to treatment and uh, then we refer to anesthesiology to determine the feasibility of treatment and was approved. Treatment and management were performed in the OR under total intravenous anesthesia. Why we choose TIVA? Because intravenous sedation has less psychological effect than general anesthesia on the pregnant patient and the developing fetus and can be used for short and simple procedure. The treatment for the first, uh, we do disinfection, and next determine the line incision considering the lowest and fluctuating area, and then the incision is met with blood number 11 in figure A. Uh, next, enter slowly using a hemostat until it penetrates in the fascia, and if the penetration is successful, do a gentle section on the abscess area while messaging it for effective expulsion of pus in figure B to figure D. Monitoring of vital signs and rubber drain application and fixation with suture in figure E. Cover it with gauze and evaluation vital signs. In figure G and H, we can compare photo pre-operation and post-operation. The cover was replaced every morning and afternoon or if it's full of pus. The follow-up therapy after the procedure was safe, was safe traction, metronidazole, dexamethasone, paracetamol, and high-protein milk. After treatment, the fetal was in normal condition. The mouth often increased and in POD2, the result of the routine blood test shows still leukocytosis with white blood cell is 18,000. And next treatment is extraction second molar mandibular dextra as a focal infection. The blood test result on uh, post-operation day 5 show white blood cell were within the no than normal limits. Afrin was carried out at uh, post-operation day 19 because uh, before that the pus was still active. This is a uh, photo control and you can see in POD 14, POD 19, and POD 72, patients have a symmetrical face like a normally. The OPG x-ray was performed Cut an appearance bilateral was found accompanied by a multiple dense bone island or multiple osteoma in the jaw and imperfect appearance of dentinogenesis in the posterior mandibular teeth. Pregnancy is accompanied by many psychological changes which place the mother at a high risk of infection or having grave consequence once infected. First, the immune response is greatly diminished during pregnancy, thus resulting in a potential faster progression of an infection. In addition, there is decreased natural chemotaxis, cell-mediated immunity, and natural killer cell activity, and also there is decrease in oxygen reserve of graphic patient. Wazir S. and Han M. in their study, Patients with increased number of odontogenic infection were in their last uh, trimester in 15%, second trimester 28.5% and 21.4% in their, their first trimester. Material infection are caused especially by gram-negative and uh, uh, gram-negative anaerobic bacteria such as those leading to abscess of mandibular. 25% of pregnant patients develop moderate uh, hypoxemia and some, some develop an abnormal alveolar arterial oxygen gradient when placed in the supine position. Ventilation patterns and patient position must be adjusted for the pregnant patient so as to avoid hypoxemia. There is an increase in tidal volume and minute ventilation rate caused by superior displacement of the diaphragma up to 3 to 4 cm resulting in dyspnea. Up to 15% of patients exhibit this clinical sign by the middle of the second trimester and up to 75% exhibit it by the middle of the third trimester. 
Some of the vital sign of this patient indicate this abnormality because the patient in pregnancy can improve the cardiovascular system where the cardiac output increases by approximate 20% to 30% in the heart rate during pregnancy during the second and third semester. This is associated with a decrease in blood flow venous return to the heart from compression of the inferior vena cava by the gravid uterus, which can um, result in a 15% uh, re reduction in cardiac output. At 32 weeks of pregnancy, the blood volume increased by 14% to 15%, mainly due to an increase in the volume of blood plasma. In addition, there was also a 30% increase in red blood cell volume that contributed to an increase in total blood volume. Facial space infection should be handled in a standard fashion. Airway assessment, imaging, incision and dryness, removal focal infection, uh, and supportive therapy. Rana et al., which found that the majority of the patient with submandibular abscesses require incision and drainage in up to 78% of patients and only 22% of patients improve only with medical therapy. Antibiotic in this case should be carefully considered. Also, disseminated odontogenic uh, infection are important addition to surgical treatment. Penicillin and cephalosporin are the most commonly used antibiotic during pregnancy. These medications are found to be safe when used during pregnancy, and in this case, the patient responds to the antibiotic. Keep in mind that the use of metronidazole in pregnant women remains controversial to this day. The metronidazole used work for anaerobic bacteria and is liked to be teratogenic in the first half of pregnancy. But there has been no evidence the teratogenic metronidazole in the final semester. Protocol for management of pregnant patients with severe odontogenic infection. For the first, the patient prior to admission, then a medical assessment is carried out, including the maternal airway and fetal health. After that, the patient admit under the care of oral maxillofacial surgery. Airway control, if the, uh, if the airway is good, the patient will be referred to option for maternal evaluation and fetal monitoring. Uh, if the maternal and fetal are cons uh, considered normal and good, follow up the infection assessment, airway monitoring, and antibiotic intravenous therapy. Inform consent and treatment, and then ICU monitoring if needed after treatment, uh, general, general ward until stable, discharge on oral antibiotic, and outpatient. As a conclusion, uh, proper management in cases of odontogenic infection, especially submandibular space abscess, that occur in pregnant women should be appropriate and in accordance with the condition of the pregnant woman. An appropriate evaluation of the patient condition in general and the continuation of prophylactic incision and drainage therapy is an adequate evaluation of the patient condition and that can be performed in this situation as well as in pregnancy. That's all for me. If you have any question, please contact me at mutiarajahan at gmail.com. Thank you for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.